Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through him. When you look at the beautiful creation that is around you, beauty, such beauty, such vast beauty. But if you're fixated on the things of the world, and you're finding no peace, then you can't absorb, you can't fully take in. If you're looking at things in a, in a cynical uh, fashion, from a scientific point of view, then you can't, you're not in the mindset of appreciating the creative hand of God. And so your understanding of what's around you becomes like a quest rather than a position of enjoyment, rather than a position of appreciation, it becomes a quest to understand. So that's what's meant about, you know, by people becoming heady, They're in their head. It's like a prison because you, it's like you don't sit back, you know? It's like the artist who's painting his picture. He's there, he's looking at it. He's very intent on the detail. But every so often, he needs to switch that off, take a few steps back from his work and just look at it as somebody appreciating it. So anyway. Okay, okay, okay. And then he'll say, well, from the perspective of the viewer, of the, of the customer, of the person appreciating the work, well, now I have to change that, I think alter that and then he goes puts the other hat on whoosh, and he goes back to work well the beauty of being a creature is that we are able to remain in the perspective of one who's receiving the gifts receiving the love The Bible says that there will come a time when we won't have to ask questions. That's stunning. There are things that are the way they are currently for the purposes of testing. If you cannot be trusted in that which is least, how can you be trusted in that which is most? If you, can't, if you keep crashing the Fiat, you're not going to get the keys to the Ferrari. Unless you've got money to burn. Right? You're not going to get the keys to the Ferrari. They want to know you can keep the Fiat between the hedges before you get behind the wheel of the Ferrari. Right? Because that thing could be potentially a weapon touch the, pa the pedal it's gone so before you're trusted with greater power you have to be trustworthy in that which is least so if you're trustworthy in little you're trustworthy in much okay so God will test you he will test you he will place you in a position of adversity. It's like Job said, should we only accept good things from God? When his wife came alongside him and said, curse God and die, she said to him. She's not, she wasn't exactly an asset to him at that point. Right? And that's pretty much what Satan is saying to you. He's not an asset to you. No matter how many big boy toys and bells and whip whistles he offer, offers you because of the faculty God gave him that he's able to assist you you know mechanically and it's like God said Satan you are interested in the things of man and not the things of God why is Satan interested in the things of, of man because he's interested in enticing man away from God for the purposes of the, the destruction of his soul he wants to exclude you from God so that you can put your attention on him 
right? He doesn't want what's best for your soul. His agenda and his motivations are selfish, even though he purports otherwise, even though he claims otherwise. So we look to God, we look to his word to know the truth because we know, because we've received, we've, we've received his Holy Spirit when we've sought him. And his Holy Spirit, we know by revelation of his Holy Spirit that what God says is the truth. He cannot lie. That Our eyes have been opened to that. It's like when you have conscience and you stand there and you go, don't kick that puppy, that's wrong. I use this analogy a lot because it's just basic. It's very simple. The puppy, we know the puppy is innocent. It didn't do anything. It wasn't sitting at home hatching a malicious plan against you. It's a puppy with floppy ears and a cute little button nose. And it's tripping up over itself sometimes. So when somebody comes along and gives it the boot, you're like, what are you doing? So there's a complex understanding there. You know that that puppy doesn't have, you know, moral agency. It's just a little puppy. Don't kick it. It didn't do anything wrong. So that means you understand that you have moral agency. And there's, so there's a lot you can deduce from that. The fact that you know it's wrong for somebody to stick the boot in a little puppy with floppy ears that it trips over. <laughs> right? You know it's wrong. So that means... You know other things are wrong. And that means you know what's right. Because you have conscience. With knowledge. That means you've been endowed with the ability to know the difference between right and wrong. And I preach this a lot on the street. Because it's something that society ignores. Is accountability anymore. You know it's like. So long as they're killing each other and not us. You know, it's like, no, you do do what thou wilt, but don't jump over my back wall and rob my dog. You do whatever you want, so long as it's not this, 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 and this, and this, and this. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's it's doggy dog. It's self-preservation and care about nobody else. I'll stay at the top of the hill. You stay at the bottom of the hill. You do whatever you want to each other. Just don't come up the top of the hill. That's not love. That's not care. That's not that's not uh, pro-social. To tell somebody do whatever you want. When you know that there are certain things that are harmful to that person. That's maniacal. That's craziness. It's like like Hunger Games. You know, like let's get them fighting over food. What can, what else can we do? <laughs> It's craziness because they know their time is short and some some people have just thrown their lot in said right I don't care I'm just gonna do as much harm and much damage as I possibly can while I'm here and they have and they and that, that's what they intend to do a lot of them And so we're going to see evil increase in the world. But when evil increases in the world, God is not absent from, from the world. He's in the midst. So if, if God is raising a church in the midst of evil in the world, like, you know, like, in a, like, a, like a, a vast evil, a dense, pungent evil, in the world hearts growing cold people uh, becoming like Ugh. like <sighs> cold losing love like you know just that interest in other people for the purposes of just loving them it's all what can i get from this situation and it's not love people will be ruthless Lovers of money, lovers of self. They'll exalt themselves. Like, you'll start to see more of that. What can I get from this situation? And and I, I think it's going to be a, a corporate run society where 
you know, if you look at um, companies, they're named after false gods. They're named after idols. Nike and Adidas. And it's like, what household do you belong to? If you look at the, the Greek mythology that's involved in the college life in America, you belong to Alpha House and you belong to this house and you belong to that house. Really what, what they're talking about is dead entities that they're still worshipping from times of old and they're remembering them in their structures well that's going to only increase in society and so when they follow the corporation what they're really saying is I belong to this house they're saying uh, you're getting the phone call now will you invest in this crypto bitcoin da -da 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 -da, whatever it is this company, you've shares in Tesla. What you're saying is, I'm going to jump on the Tesla bandwagon. I'm going to jump into this plot, this kingdom, this land. I'm under this one, that one, that one, that one. And so now they're dividing people up into their houses. But we have no part in that, no part or peace in it. Because we belong to the household of Jesus Christ. We're his servants and his friends. Amen. So if evil is increasing in the world, God doesn't go away. He's still here. And he's still giving um, his servants the tools, the instruments to carry out the work he has purposed them to do in the earth. So don't think that God is absent just because evil is on the increase. That's not what's happening. God is sovereign, but evil will consume itself. It will consume itself. That's the nature of evil. It's the nature of evil. You put two murderers into a room. What's going to happen? They're going to try to murder each other. It's the nature of evil, folks. It can't end well. That's what the preacher's telling you. He's saying, come out of it. Come out of her, my people. Come out of Egypt. Come out of from under Pharaoh come out of her my people and do you think that that Pharaoh's hard heart is enough to stop God from bringing his people out do you think that even if Pharaoh pursue that pursues you out of Egypt to destroy you that he can reach you did God not part the waters for his people and Allow them to flow back together when Pharaoh tried to f pursue? Do you think that God has grown weak? Do you think that it's uh, Satan sustaining life? Uh, uh, the birds flying around is because of Satan's power? Uh, the cats and the dogs scaling the walls or jumping in the park? Do you think that's Satan's power? God has not grown weak. Evil will consume itself. The Bible tells us this. Good to read from Revelation. Um, in a previous video I read from 1 to 7. So I'm going to continue on. Um, from chapter 8 excuse me so it's um, Revelation chapter 8 let's turn up the mic a little bit when he opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for about half an hour and I saw the seven angels who stand before God and to them were given seven trumpets then another angel having a golden censer came and stood at the altar he was given much incense that he should offer it 
with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Praise his name. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. You know, I just want to pause there for a moment. The Bible talks about there, there being an arrogance and a boldness in people. And I can see it now. I can see like a hardness, a boldness, a relentlessness, and a hatred towards the Lord Jesus. And people have hardened their hearts against him. And I can see that they've become violent towards his kingdom. And, you know, I look, to, I look at them as lost children. Because, because there are none greater than the Lord God. None can contest his throne. None. A mighty angel, Satan, tried to contest his throne. And, and, and the only throne he got was out of heaven. Thrown out of heaven. Not a throne above God's. Right? So, folks, little human beings are not going to contest the throne of God. But that boldness and that arrogance is a deception. That false peace, it's a spirit that's operating in you. But those spirits that operate in you are lying to you because even they fall down before Jesus. So I'm saying turn back before it's too late. You know, they say, steal your hearts against mercy. I say, ask God to soften your heart so that you will not come under his wrath on the judgment day. So that just came into my heart just now. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water the name of the star is wormwood a third of the waters became wormwood and a many and sorry many die many men died from the water because it was made bitter then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck a third of the moon and a third of the stars so that a third of them were darkened a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven, to the earth, a star. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. 
So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth had power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and they were and they, there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after these things. Then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulphur yellow and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions and out of their mouths came fire smoke and brimstone by these three plagues a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind, who were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk and they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or the sexual immorality or their thefts I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was on his head his face was like the sun and his feet like pillars of fire he had a little book open in his hand and he set his foot his right foot on the sea and his excuse me his left foot on the land and cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars when he cried out seven thunders uttered their voices now when the seven thunders uttered their voices i was about to write but i heard a voice from heaven saying to me Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered, and do not write them. The angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives for ever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in it, the earth and the things that are in it, and the sea and the things that are in it, that there should be delay no longer, but in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished 
as he declared to his servants the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues and kings. Then I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. But leave out the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it. For it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for forty-two months. Forty-two months, that's three and a half years, isn't it? Three and a half years. The Gentiles, the pagans, unbelievers, trod, tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. And I will give power to my two witnesses and they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. Now that's very revealing. When you think about that, that's very revealing. There are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the God of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies. And if anyone wants to harm them, he must be killed in this manner. These have power to shut heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over waters to turn them to blood, to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will make war against them, overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Then those from the peoples, tribes, tongues and nations will see their dead bodies three and a half days and not allow their bodies to be put into graves. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them, make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. Now after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. And they heard a voice, a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended to heaven in the cloud, and, they, and their enemies saw them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. In the earthquake, 7,000 people were killed, and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And he shall and the twenty four sorry, I was reading the thing twice. And he shall reign for ever and ever. And the twenty four el- for ever and ever. Let me read that again. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. 
and the twenty-four elders who sat before God on their thrones <laughs> fell on their faces and worshipped God. Saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were The format changed here. One second. And there were. Lost the position. Get back further. There were. There were. The two witnesses. Where was I? Revelation 11. Yeah. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven. And the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Revelation 12. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child she cried out in labour and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. He's talking about the fall of the angels. One third of the angels. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is like human humanity. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there, 1,260 days. And the war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So you see, Satan warred against God's angels. He attacked them. What did he expect? War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, with Satan, Lucifer, the fallen angel. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail. They couldn't, sure. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. They were put out, as you would expect. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan. And who deceives the world, the whole world. 
He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power excuse me, and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before our God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Powerful. That she might fly into the wilderness to her place. Where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. From the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. Pursued her that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God hates us you keep the commandments of God Satan hates your existence hates you he hates us and have the testimony of Jesus Christ then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. His feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. I think this refers to uh, the kingdoms, the different kingdoms, and their nature. The dragon gave him his power, his throne and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed. You see, I noticed that Satan um, creates different kingdoms, but he does so um, with different uh, uh, forms of governance. And those forms of governance are to create a specific type of society for a specific function. The dragon gave him his power, his throne, and a great authority. And great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue f for 42 months then he opened his mouth in blasphemy so for, there's that 42 months again that's three and a half years and remember it was said that the gentiles will tread in this in the holy city for 42 months as well so this is likely the same 42 months 
and he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months speaking great things what could they be well they'd have to be things against God speaking great things great high arguments against the throne of God blasphemies against God then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God and it's recent that the anti-blasphemy laws have been abolished it's recent Facebook and all of these platforms are full of OMGs it's a trend now a fad now a phase it's just second nature to a lot of people that they'll just say this if they're surprised about something or sad about something or it's just like an exclamation but this is wrong you mustn't do this like what if somebody used your mother's name as a curse word now what about using the one who created all mothers name as a curse word it's not acceptable it's punishable with hell fire then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven this is the culmination and the manifestation of evil and the true colors of Satan coming to fruition or color it's black it's death it's darkness it's the fulfillment of prophecy it is the darkness coming against the light and failing to overwhelm God is light and the light has always existed in the darkness but the darkness has not overcome the light it can't it will consume itself it was granted to him to make war with the saints he's going to make war with us he's... notice it says it was granted to him he's allowed to do it he's being permitted to do it remember you, you'll hear in my videos I'm constantly saying the only way Satan can come against us is if he's allowed to do so because we're gods so if God allows it it will happen it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them we know what's coming it was granted to this with the granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them and authority was given him over every tribe tongue and nation look listen now and authority was given him over every tribe tongue and nation is it not happening is there not coming a new world order? Are they not attempting to break things down, to smash them? Smash the Irish constitution with this and smash that with that. Deculturalize, sanitize, remove, and replace that with this before they even know while they're all in lockdown. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Listen now, because the remainder of this sentence is vital to your understanding. Whose names have not been written in the book of life and of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You will worship him if your name is not written in the book of life and authority was given him over every tribe tongue and nation 
all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. This is the Lord giving revelation. He's saying, if you are to go into captivity, you will go into captivity. And he who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. You heard it was said, if you've read the Bible, he who lives by the sword will, shall die by the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So we're being called to our station, beloved. We're being called to our purpose. We will embody patience and faith. So get ready. Get ready in your spirit, in your heart, in your soul to embody patience and faith. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their hand or on their foreheads. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is 666. Folks, all you have to do is look at the logos of things. They all have the six hidden in them. Google is 666. Vodafone is a stylized six. It's all 66666. The Guardi have 666 in their phone number. Right? It's the pride of men. Okay. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So I'm going to finish up with this chapter. Then I looked, and behold, a lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the voice of many waters, and like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpists playing their harps. They sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who are not defiled with women, 
for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no deceit, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand. This is talking about the mark of the beast now that we spoke about it in the la- that I spoke about in the last chapter. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image. This is the anti-Christian church, the beast system. A new world order. If you bow down to that and the image, it's given. And receives his mark. On his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. He himself, which is poured out, listen now, full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commands of God, commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit that they may rest from their labours and their works follow them. Then I looked and behold a white cloud and on the cloud sat one like the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him who sat on the cloud thrust in your sickle and reap for the time has come for you to reap for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar who had power over fire and he cried with a loud cry to him who had the sharp sickle saying thrust in your sharp sickle and gathered the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe so the angel thrust in thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and threw it into the great winepress of the wrath of god and the winepress was trampled outside the city and blood came out of the winepress up to the horses' bridles for 1,600 furlongs. Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life and no man comes to the Father but through me, saith the Lord. Repent and turn to King Jesus before it's too late. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him 
from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. Blessings.